welcome to the Metal Voice in Mississauga at the Metal Works with, wow, you know, there he is. Are you the CEO of Metal Works? Um, or? I don't know. I'm the chief cook and bottle washer. I know that. <laughs> I could be the CEO too. Good to see you, Jimmy. Good to see you. <laughs> also inducted into the Metal Hall of Fame. I guess it's been about a year and a half now. Very congratulations on that. Thank you. I guess the reason why I came here is every time I go on these little journeys, and I think Mississauga and the Metal Works is, is a mecca for us Canadians and people around the world who love trying, right? Just quickly tell everyone about, you know, the when it was first opened and what you guys are doing today. What, what has it evolved into? Gee, that's a, that's a loaded question. It's a good question. Well, high level, high but level. High, high level, level, high well, level. We started, you know, it was pretty humble when we started. We were actually one street, uh, one concession road over kind of back in the day. And uh, we had a warehouse and, you know, the recording studio was a cassette recorder and one microphone, I think. But we only lasted there for about six months. And this spot where we're sitting right now became available in 1977. Wow. And we moved over here. We were here for the great rail disaster that made international mm. headlines. Yeah. And we've been making music ever since. That's why it says on that sign, 40 years of hits. It's been more than 40 now, yeah. So we're going to hit our 50th anniversary in 2027. How about that? So, Gil, uh, the documentary, Rock and Roll Machine, was released now. It's been, uh, I believe, two years. Mm -hmm. What has been the feedback that you've gotten from the documentary? I feel like it was released yesterday because mm -hmm. it just keeps popping up and popping up and popping up more and more and more, you know, people are, I saw it on this airplane. I saw it on that airplane. I saw it on Amazon. I saw it on Netflix. I saw it here. I saw it there. It just keeps kind of going around. Crave here in Canada has been carrying it since day one. Yeah. But right. also Bell Media on their broadcast, on their, you know, uh, television network, they have broadcast it multiple times. So it just keeps resonating with Triumph fans and uh, a lot of them now to send us emails and so on. It's so I've watched it three times. I've watched it six times. I've, it's it's crazy how many times the people have watched it. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great ride. Has it turned into, you've created this demand now for Triumph, <laughs> right? When are the guys, when are you guys gonna reunite? When are you gonna reunite? When's the next album coming out? Because with the documentary comes this new generation of fans as well, right? Yeah, it does. And I mean, uh, some tough questions to answer, but you know, there is some stuff coming down the pike. We have our tribute album, which I don't know that you and I have talked yes, about before, yes, yes, yes. that Mike Klink is doing an unbelievable job and, and Slash himself just recorded guitar. Oh, yeah, just here or was it remote? No, he did it in LA with, okay. with Mike. He just recorded guitar on I Live for the Weekend. So when that tribute album comes out, and I mean, Slash is one of a whole cavalcade of, of phenomenal musicians yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that are going to blow people's minds. So that that's going to be out in this year, in 2023. On Memorial Weekend, which yes. is coming up, the documentary, Rock and Roll Machine, will be released on Access TV. So you want to tell me a little bit about that? Well, it's yet another platform, uh, and this is a really good one, that mm -hmm. are broadcasting the film uh, one way or the other. I have not been able to believe how many different venues or different you know, uh, distribution networks the film has been through. So I think it's been great for the fans because you can, you know, up here, of course, it's been on Bell Media, on, on uh, Terrestrial TV. It's, been on, it's on Crave streaming all the time, 24-7. Uh, and will be for years, but now in America, it's on Amazon. It's on, uh, you know, so many, so many networks. And this, this access broadcasting is going to be fantastic for a lot of people. Do you think there'll be a sequel to Rock and Roll Machine? I mean, there's an attic somewhere here, right, with all kinds of memorabilia. Uh, is there going to be a part two, Rock and Roll Machine part two? I think so. And, uh, you know, I'm probably the only person that thinks that because I remember when we were filming this one, I said to uh, Sam Dunn, who was the co-director, I said, you know, we got to be keeping this, some of this B-roll here because we're going to do another one. And he's like, don't get ahead of yourself. And I said, hey, man, my whole career, I've been ahead of myself. That's how I had a career. So let's stay with that. So, yeah, I have a plan to do uh, a mixed reality tour. Uh, for Triumph. I've talked about it a few times in, in, in a few interviews. And uh, yeah, I'm very serious about that. Working with our lighting director, Paul Dexter at Masterworks in Los Angeles. He's uh, unbelievable. 
and uh, was kind of the godfather of holograms. This is not a hologram tour by any means or a hologram we got to make sure we're clear about that, right? Yeah. This is not a hologram no, tour. No, it's not going to be a hologram. No, we're not gonna, no but we are going to use a, a form, forms of holography or three-dimensional recreation uh, mm -hmm. to do this. Um, yeah, there's a lot of technology involved, and it's not going to be like, let's put it this way, Jimmy. Yeah. It's not going to be like anything that anybody's ever seen before. If Paul and I get our way with the way we're developing uh, the content that's going to be seen, but it's going to be something that'll blow people's minds, and it'll it'll be uh, triumph through and through. So it's going to be triumph music. So just give me a little example of what this means. Is it three guys on stage, hologram, or is this a mystery? Or we're not you're not going to reveal it. Yet? I, I don't I don't want to tell tell too much other than it's the the key is to think of mixed reality and what that means because it's descriptive. So they put some Google goggles on. No it. glasses, no glasses, no tricks that way. All the tricks will be coming from the stage, but. We've got some phenomenal plans. All the music uh, is, is pre-recorded, right? Because it's, it's, be all, it's all from live shows. Oh, okay. But yeah. it will be custom tailored to this particular, uh, you know, performance, let's say. And uh, it involves some actors. It involves footage of Mike, Rick, and Gil and recreations of Mike, Rick, and Gil. And uh, some of the coolest things that people are going to see in the touring market i can tell you that is this the answer to why don't you guys tour anymore why don't you guys put out a new album you know and you guys have said it many times that there's not going to be a, a formal reunion so this is the answer to the demand for that is that what it is it, it is really i mean uh in a sense you know there's this feeling of obligation to the fans yeah and yet you know your life moves on so i'm fully uh, engaged doing what I'm doing and I have a lot of things that I'm working on that I'm passionate about in the education field and so on for music so I don't have the bandwidth for another Triumph tour at this stage and you know Mike and Rick have different things they're doing as yeah, well yeah, yeah. but you know we're, we we talk about Triumph all the time we love it we, we we're brothers we always will be and uh, yeah this is a way to give something to the fans that we know will absolutely knock them right off the chairs I'm excited. And uh, we're excited about it. And uh, we do have the bandwidth to do that. Thank to uh, not only Paul, but our, our video director, Don Allen, some great technical people that we're working with. You know, Harry Witz at Claire Brothers Audio, who's going to do all the sound. This is going to be really, uh, really something else. So to clarify in the documentary bit, you said there's going to be a part two. Is that going to be from the footage that you already had that you didn't use? Or is it going to be new footage and new experiences or as a part two, a continuation of where you were. I think there'll be a tiny bit of the archival footage, I'll call it, that's already in the can from the first doc that was yeah. not stuff that wasn't used. Cause sure. we, we just had, we had this much and we use this Like much. every documentary, right? Like every documentary. But I would say there's gonna be a lot of new footage and it's gonna tie into this tour. So I think there'll be footage that is related to the tour and how we develop the technologies that we came up with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and stuff that's really unusual, like some of our technical partners, like Microsoft is helping us, for example. Very cool. People would be like, what? Yeah, Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft mixed reality. Yeah, they're really happening. You know, they're really helping Triumph. So yeah. pretty cool stuff. All right, US Festival. It just, you had the uh, Triumph I don't know, Zoom, YouTube meeting, right? <laughs> With the fans, right? It was Just a blast. Subscribe to Triumph on YouTube. Um, so where are you going to go next with the uh, US Festival, the famous US Festival, that Triumph, that performance? Or is it going to find any other platform? Well, uh, I think Round Hill may be reissuing. Uh, okay. You know, I, what formats, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, but... Right now, there's a uh, a vinyl, a double vinyl yes. US Festival yes. release. Yeah. Uh, so that I can speak to for sure. It's very limited though. I think there's, I, I'm guessing maybe a thousand copies or something like that. It's on fancy different colored vinyls and so on. So I know that's coming out because I've seen it. It's a beautiful, you know, it's a gatefold that yeah, opens I've up. It's got all yeah. kinds of photos on it. Uh, so that is going to be available, uh, I believe, next, uh, you know, on Memorial Day weekend. But that's just a kind of a one shot. I, I have a feeling there will be, uh, you know, probably another release or two uh, with different formats and so on through our uh, U.S. distributor Round Hill. But I, I don't have any real details at the moment. Okay. You know, various artifacts. Some of these things are really old. I was looking at this this, this morning. <laughs> I hadn't seen that myself for a while. This is pretty cool. 
Where's that famous attic? Right above your head. Okay. Great picks. Beautiful. So this is the official Triumph wall, correct? Yeah, I'll just go back down this side. Wow, look at this. Oh, this is from the... Um... More stuff. And in terms of, I know we we're talking about artificial intelligence. We were. And just so everybody knows, he's not only a fabulous drummer, fabulous singer, and fabulous songwriter, <laughs> but this guy's got a brain to pick. I mean, in the business world, in the in this sort of a technology world, all right, very high level, mm -hmm. pros and cons of artificial intelligence in the music industry. And if people don't understand what that is, well, it's basically software that learns and spits out what is learned <laughs> to the to the end user. Well said, Jimmy. <laughs> Just quickly, high level, pros, cons, where do you see this going? Well, the cons are obvious, and you know we've already seen the cons, you know, with the fake Drake and the fake uh, Weekend and so on that was a few weeks back. And, uh, you know, certainly there's always going to be bad actors anytime you get technology, yes. right? Crooks of any kind and, and creeps of any kind. So the people that want to do things that are, you know, stupid, like trying to, you know, fake Drake, if you will, uh, or fake any artist... Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be a nuisance, and yeah. you know somebody needs to kind of swat them. Uh, however, uh, you know if you think about the things that, that artificial intelligence can do in music that perhaps people aren't thinking of right away, which is things like uh, you know mental health, music therapy. Yes, I can see uh, we're working through our company uh, Sounds Unite, which is which is our one of our music education platforms here. Uh, we're working with mental health uh, hospitals. So I know that there's going to be benefits at having machine learning or, or a layer of AI that, that can, you know, curate information for people that's critical to them at a, at a critical point. Um, I can see, you know, as, as a listener, I can mm -hmm. see the benefits of uh, AI being able to uh, deliver, find music for you yeah. that you that you want to hear or you want to learn about. So, uh, for example, on our, on our uh, Sounds Unite learning platform, when, when we have our uh, uh, AI componentry uh, built out and launched on, on that application, it's going to say, hey, you want to play guitar? Uh, you're, what, what style? Oh, you're that style? Oh, what, what level? Oh, you're at that level? Well, you know what? Maybe you should check out uh, this. This might be a good learning step for you next. Yeah. So sort of pedagogical influence. The other one might be, uh, hey, Jimmy, you're a metal guitar player. I bet you want to be a metal bass player that you can collaborate with. I'm going to introduce you right over here. You know, gotcha. so there's those sorts of things that I think could be quite positive. I think in medicine, it's been going to be some phenomenal uh, impact, positive, yeah. positive impact. But you know, there's the there's the fear of job losses. You know, uh, in in many many areas, and but. You know, it, you can't hold back technology. I mean, it's like we, we thought that when Texas Instruments or Hewlett Packard or whoever it was that invented, you know, the calculator, there would be no more accountants. We still have accountants. <laughs> that's you right, know, that's right. It, it, it's kind of one of it's kind of one of those things. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to see how it plays out, and hopefully, the good uses are the ones that help humanity and society, and 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 the, and the bad actors we'll somehow. We'll them out. Well, hopefully, artificial intelligence. You know, will. The good team and the you know the white hats are, are gonna are gonna get you know back at these guys using their own burglar tools if they ha if they yeah. deploy them in a nefarious fashion. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like think for police uh, police uh, law enforcement. I yeah. mean, surely uh, AI is going to bring out some great improvements in, yes. in law enforcement. Yes. You know, yes. so yes. Yes. hey, we want a safe society for our kids to grow up in. Hopefully, AI can help us do that, and uh, yeah. it'll be more good than bad. But I do think. It is a double-edged sword. We have to be very, very careful. Okay. Last question. Triumph, live albums that we haven't heard. There must be so many archives of so many shows that you have that you've never released. And you haven't released too many official live albums. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we do have a lot of live uh, stuff in the vaults. And uh, actually, one of the first uses, of course, is going to be that MXR Vision tour ah, that yes, I talked about. yes. Right? That mixed reality project, tour. The secret project. The secret project. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the, so that'll be a use there, but I think probably when we get around to it, we'll get some more stuff out of the vaults and see if we can come up with, uh, you know, something that's meaningful rather than just throwing something out because it exists. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of things that we've got to get, get you know, that are going to come out first, like the tribute album that we talked about. Yes. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of traction. It's going to take a while to dissipate. So well, we, we don't have anything right now uh, live that's planned, but uh, I think down the road, yes, you're right. We need some. Okay, <laughs> Gil, it's bit, thank you so much for having me today. It's, uh, I know it was sort of last second I came by. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you and seeing you in person for the first time after so many interviews. And everybody out there, keep watching The Metal Voice. And, of course, keep supporting Triumph. Thanks, Jimmy.